guys, it's me, Hazel. This is Hazel's Hostels, where I guide you through hostels around the world. So today we're going to another hostel in the Tokyo neighborhood of Shibuya. Shibuya is a really amazing city center with a vibrant electric nightlife and plenty of unique things to do and see. You also have one of the funnest Mario tracks here, and it's my personal favorite. If you're coming to Japan soon and you want to check that out, click up here for like my guide and experience because it's one of my favorite things to do here in Japan. Now when it comes to Shibuya, there are a few sides of the city. If you don't mind staying on the more quiet side and walking to some of the locations, may I present Mustard Hostel. Now, I'm not quite sure where it gets its name from, but it may be because of this vibrant yellow color, which makes it really hard to miss since it's in a very low-key part of town. Thankfully, there are still small places to grab a bite to eat here, and there's even a 7-Eleven a block away. This footage is pre-pandemic, and I know that they've been doing a lot of work on this side of the station, so this whole area and video is probably a lot more updated at this point. However, I do still know after doing research that this side still caters to business suites and offices. To get here, your best option is to exit Shibuya Station C2 or 32. Walk down one street and hang a right until you hit the T and then you're gonna take a left. Go all the way down to your fourth or fifth left Basically, right after you pass the 7-Eleven, it's going to be on the opposite side of you. You'll see a very sleek looking building with lots of windows and yellow bikes. Check-in went great, it's pretty simple, but I do want to say that there was a really long line when we decided to check in at 3 p.m. Most of the workers knew like fluent English and even I was impressed. They also have some branded t-shirts and other goodies right next to the check-in window, so that was kind of fun to browse while waiting. Now as far as the layout goes, as most of Tokyo does, this one divides its sections by floors. On the ground level, you have check-in and the lobby. To your left, you'll find the lobby restroom followed by the Megan bar and patisserie. I will comment that the lobby is rather small, though they do have a decent amount of seating next to these windows. And to be honest, I found the downstairs restroom to be way more to my liking. <laughs> I truly love this stained concrete look with the brushed metal finishings and I found everything to be clean and sleek feeling. As a foreigner, I loved how the toilet lit up and greeted me and how the controls were just a tad more advanced than the others that I had seen. On the other side of this large logo wall, you'll find the elevators to take you up to your room. And the next two floors have the same exact layout. They are all dorm rooms and at the end of the hall, you'll find the male and female restroom. So this is kind of the point or I feel mustard loses a little bit of its charm to me. When I'm staying somewhere, I kind of prefer a more relaxed and like cozy feel. And I think I like the interior design and decor to kind of just match that vibe, right? <laughs> but the minute you step off that elevator, you are blinded by the light in the hallway. <laughs> Walking down this to get to your room, or to the showers almost feels like you're in a hospital or other institution. This place is a good stay, especially for the price and where it's located. It does have multiple types of accommodations as well. However, I only have experience with the dorm rooms and that's actually where I need your help. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that I can actually start working with these hostels to bring you a more informational and well-rounded video in the future. I want to bring you guys the full experience. Here are the many options that you have. First, here's the mixed dorm with three bunk beds. That means six people to a room. You also have this option to rent as a group or for female only dorms. If you are a female solo traveler at this point, I would suggest this option. Then you have a private bunk twin. This way you have some privacy with one of your friends and you have a sink and a mirror. However, with this option, you still do use the shared restroom like at the end of the hall. If you'd rather not sleep in bunk beds, there's a private double, which still has the sink, but you still share the bathrooms down the hall. So if the shared bathroom is the actual issue for you, you do have the option of the superior twin, which it claims it can sleep three, since it has one double bed and a twin and its own restroom. And lastly, we have something called the Mustard Comfort, which they claim sleeps seven. With six in a row, 
in these double beds and another one on this twin. And I honestly find this to be a really interesting idea, but I do want to say as someone who's traveled to Japan a lot throughout my life, Japanese people and buildings tend to be like a little bit smaller. So if you're a foreigner with like a large build, I urge you to think about those things when you are booking your space. It might be more comfortable for you to actually have one person to a double. So I personally chose to stay in the mixed dorm at this point in time because I wanted to get a good sense of the shared accommodations. So here we are in the room and it did feel a bit cramped to me. Even though it's the daytime, there are still people sleeping so I had to be quiet. Because of the small space there were frequently things around the room like shoes and luggage. <laughs> Pod itself was nice enough though. It had hangers and a thin mattress pad with a big plush blanket. The privacy curtain is a thin white roll down curtain and it's split into two so I found that like kind of interesting. On the other side you have plugs and lights. The light is yellow to match the theme of the hostel and I like that they give you a USB port and a type A wall plug. Your locker is also located in the bedroom however they are so loud I felt bad trying to open it. There's also a small window and a table in the middle giving this even more of an institution vibe. Down the hall you'll find the restrooms and all in all, they aren't half bad. Plenty of mirror space and a fair amount of toilets, though definitely not as clean as you would expect in Japan. On the other side, you'll find the shower room, which is a bit more bare compared to others, but you still do have a front changing room and these acrylic Japanese showers. Light switches are to the left, and this is a pretty typical shower that you'll find it's actually a bit taller than most, which is smart when you're trying to accommodate foreigners. So as I mentioned, there really isn't a lot of lobby. There's just seating around the front check-in desk. However, there is an entire restaurant and bakery to the side. And at the time of my stay, they did give us a voucher for, I believe, a coffee or a juice, but I'm not 100% if they still do that. They had a few options and we tried their lunch and had a burger and BLT. And I'll say it was decent, but compared to other burger joints, I'd probably rather like Mickey D's. Actually, pro tip, if you're really craving a burger but you want it to be like cheap, straight up BK. I tell no lies. Hands down, Burger King will have way more options that will be a little bit more fun to try. But anyways, while the cafe isn't my favorite, it is still a good option to have and really nice to stop in for a morning cup of coffee. But there's something even cooler waiting upstairs. A kitchen! And it also ends up doubling as like the real lounge area, which is kind of one of my favorite ways to do it. You have reading material and seating when you first walk in, and then over to your left, you have a microwave, hot kettles, and there's even a soda machine stocked with foreign favorites, like Mountain Dew and Monster Energy. But the crowning jewel of the vending machines are like these instant ramens, and there's even games like Uno and playing cards. That was really well thought out in my opinion. There are a few tables here so you can sit and enjoy yourself, but there's also like this wrap around patio outside with benches and quite a view. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe not that much of a view, but hey, this building's pretty cool looking, right? I wanna take this time to mention that Japan builds very fast. <laughs> I have not been back since COVID happened, so this entire view could look completely different at this point. I don't want the main deciding factor to be what is around this building, basically, <laughs> because it's most likely changed, okay? Okay, cool. Here's where we get to the segment. Who's this hostel for? I think if you're looking for a cheaper place to stay, don't have a bad back, and is potentially traveling in like a group where you guys have a lot of different budgets, I think this place would be great for you. Now, Tokyo is not actually what us Americans call a city, right? I know media kind of says as such, Shibuya itself is a city, and it is the largest one at that. So staying in this area will provide you a lot of things that you can do and you won't have to travel very far for. You'll have plenty of nightlife, awesome shopping and restaurants, convenience stores, and you'll only have to take the train looking to do things that are more personalized. Like if you wanna to go to the old city, that's a really cool day trip. But when you stay in those areas, you're not gonna have much to do in your downtime. So that's why I always say that staying in Shibuya or Shinjuku are the best options. And it can actually end up being a little bit more cheaper. If you are traveling solo or you can afford a little bit more, 
I'm not sure that I would recommend this place to you. I feel like I would recommend Millennials. And I'm not saying that because the beds are necessarily bad here. They are simply not the same quality as Millennials. And I do have a video about that place if you check down below. So while there are cheaper places to stay in this area, I still do think you would have a better stay in a hostel over a hotel. With a hotel, you won't be able to meet new people. You won't have kitchen equipment. And a lot of the cheaper hotels that are in this area are quite a further walk than this. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.